I'm here uh, in Nottingham and with the second manifestation of Strike Site, the exhibition that I curated and originally launched at Pi Artworks in London. The exhibition here at Backlit is really fascinating for me because I've been able to extend the very basic ideas in Strike Site. And in a way, of course, because the gallery is divided into separate spaces, there is a different relationship to the experience of it. So I was very, very excited. Some of the work is the same, but mainly every artist has made something different. So in a way, there's a shift in work and there's a shift in the understanding of the principle of the show. Now, the history of it is this. I'm pretty keen on sculpture. This is, in a way, what I would call a sculptural show, and it's not fashionable to talk about sculpture as a thing itself. This is sculptural work. It's very hard for sculptors these days to, in a way, exist in a vacuum. So often they're trying to create a sense of place or a rationale or some reason why they exist in the first place. The work is not functioning, its relationship to value is different, it is not an image as such. What I wanted was to gather these works together and I would create a sort of relationship to place. An exhibition plays house in a way. You pretend that you have a reality and then everything goes, of course, and it's over. So it's a stage and it's a fiction. I started thinking about through the physicality, the control of people, of movement that I was actually anticipating with this show, how would I kind of in a way allow without too obvious a link a relationship to people who actually themselves have no place or are moved on. The work here is not illustrative in any way, but in a way I feel the experience of the exhibition lends itself to those questions, that's all. Also, if you show very good work, in an exhibition that isn't about illustration, you are insisting on a very basic principle of freedom. There's freedom to be able to have exhibitions of art that in a way don't tell you things that are obvious, and the freedom for people to be able to live, to stay, to move, and mobility in all sorts of ways. So this was a kind of contradiction which I feel has been beautifully addressed here at Backlit in these various rooms. Obviously, I know Brian Griffith's work, but I always admired his tent pieces. They've been my favourite works by him, actually. I like the idea of the tent that actually just controls your relationship to the surface. But in a way, there's nothing there. But there is this idea of the temporary and then actuality. And so I have here two pieces by Brian. Tangible, beautiful relationship to the material but also this kind of idea of just having to navigate them and get yourself around them. And then you're not thinking about what's inside. They're notional, but they're real. So the interior is something else. So I have those. Then I remember seeing Jack Killick's work. Jack Killick was recently at the Royal Academy Schools. And I saw in his final postgraduate show a box. And I thought, God, that's so straightforward. It has no decoration, it has nothing to it. It's simply brought together. Actually, I didn't realize at the time, tell you the truth, that actually the box was meant to move, but I had to pretend that I remembered that it was moving. And so again, it's like, what is it? You can't see in it, you have to go round it. It has a sort of life of its own. There are people here whose work I've supported when they've been students of mine, and behind me, I have a work by Alice Hartley, who was a student at the Royal College of Print. Actually, we have a continuation of her relationship to silkscreen, totally basic print, monoprint, not painting on a wall, but actually producing something and then placing it on the wall. So she makes a context here. She has a relationship to maps and to displacement, false barriers. You know, if you look at a map of anywhere, you'll think there's a straight line. Who drew that and where does that come from? Then there's a jaggedness of reality. And then there's kind of the sea. And then there's another straight line that could be some arbitrary, some false, some dangerous division between two states. We have a relationship to map and movement. And here also she extends onto the ground. And we have a fantastic relationship to the earth and to ground. And a sort of sense, really kind of lyrical, but also rather aggressive. We have a piece by Javon Hapaska. And funnily enough, this piece is one of her more recent ones, but harks back to the work I remember 
by her in the ICA in the 90s where she had vehicles for movement and transportation. Her work is always about some idea of movement or some, some travel. And the piece we have managed to get here, and it's so special, is made from concrete cloth and then sort of hard metal. And it reminds me of a character or something strange out of Bosch where there's a sort of a construction, kind of architectural, slight human. I don't want to turn that into a kind of person or an animal, but it's called bird. So it has that relationship to flight or not. It's not surreal, but it's questionable. And in the context of this fantastic X factory for hosiery, you have a sense about the relationship to the collapse of manufacturing or to objects like this one that actually look as if they're to do with function that then is lost, but then rediscovered. Talking about function, Anna Shavorovich's work, I've always admired. Her work has always been in a more straightforward way about the refugee, about people moving, being on the move, about the transient, almost setting up home and then having to move on. And it's about an aid to movement and holding up fantastic tarpaulins, the transients, the tents that are sent en masse to places that are suddenly you have massive refugee population. And then on the tent, she has painted very fine reference to places, sort of vignettes of other place. So you get this relationship between domestic, the absolutely immediate personal, and then a sense of elsewhere, so landscape. When I thought about the kind of, in a way, abstract theme or the concept of this show, I remember that Anna Fasshauer has been incredibly astute politically in terms of her work. And then I looked up what she was doing many, many years later, obviously just last year, and found that she was making much more sort of formal work. And she made the most amazing mock flag. I feel the use of relief in sculpture is not being used enough. For this show, she's made a new piece and I'm so completely moved by it. And the flag is black and white, but the black and white is not exactly what you would call hard edge black and white. It's much more painterly. And this idea of the German flag, she put it to me on the telephone, that this is about Germany at the moment and nobody knowing which way it's going to go politically in terms of its relationship to people coming and people leaving, an idea of identity, national identity, all that terrifying stuff, and how fluid that is and how dangerous. So in a way, what I love about her work is that it becomes the kind of key to the map that actually just gives us a sort of emblem. Curating is a strange thing. It's overestimated, I think, as a notion. People go to curating school like mad, I used to think it was just people ordering packing cases. I didn't know really what it meant. Now I think with this show, I do feel this sense we've achieved something here. You don't see the strong hand of determination or subject. You're not being led, but you're being physically moved. And hopefully in your relationship to surface and reference, you also have another kind of movement. And also the opportunity being given to me to actually reconstitute or re-realizing this show is such a, a joy.